Are there any initial responses to the video? Anything from his two in the second video, hashtag what I learned today, what I taught today, or just any responses in general to the first video uh, and the idea of autobiographical experience in YouTube? Pitts are freshmen. Prove yourself. Well, one thing I thought of while I was seeing it, because he chose very specific genres. I mean, he chose the categories, but the genres within those categories, we could probably all think of different genres that we view of those specific can categories, animal videos, entertainment, film animation, those types of things. He chose very specific ones to relate. Yeah, oh, should I say my name or anything? Or, okay. Um, well, my name's Adam, and uh, when you were saying things that you've seen on YouTube, like I'd probably seen all of those um, instances, I guess, and uh, I thought the, the one that he showed where they say the how-to, like I know I personally have used that before, so I'm not sure if he was saying that was a good thing or a bad thing, but I've used it a couple times in, you know, sticky situations if I need something fast or how to, you know, like tie a tie or make a mummy costume. Um, I've used those, so, yeah. And what do you think, I mean, in your personal experience, how do you relate to it? Um, because, like, uh, his comment in the video is, we don't have an excuse not to know anything anymore. Do you feel like that puts a pressure on individuals, if we have this wealth of knowledge, if we have an archive of knowledge, specifically for that purpose, does it, does it force cultural upgrade in terms of understanding of different things if you don't know it you have an immediate go-to source i probably say that maybe it makes it a little bit like maybe too convenient maybe but i mean i don't really know where else i would find something like that i mean there's kind of like the knowledge that you learn from your parents like but in that case like my mom she wasn't there and my dad wasn't there so it was basically just like if something is like not convenient for you, you know, I mean, I guess you could also call on the phone, but that's like another source of communication or uh, like uh, technology that we could use. But um, maybe it's made it too convenient. I'm not sure, but I don't know. So. Anyone else have any reactions to the idea of that, that specifically or anything else, uh, the idea of we have whether or not it's a good thing now that we have so much information stored that you have to be able to know things? I just found it really interesting because um, all of our teachers have taught us that you have to be very skeptical of what you learn on the internet. And I guess the internet has grown a lot since like they have been in college and like the way they used it. So sometimes like if you're in a pinch, like Adam said, and you, you need something that isn't really that important, um, I mean, like, not really academic stuff, like, you can count on the internet to, like, help you out to get yourself out of, like, sticky situations, as he said, but, um, like, a lot of the views are kind of biased, and I guess you have to decide for yourself, like, that video from uh, the riots, it's, like, really one-sided and it was kind of unclear like what was happening in there from viewing it so it's like you have to be skeptical so learning from the internet it's kind of I don't know I think that um, having these social media outlets, uh, outlets is something that really uh, gives us potential for awareness in the world because um, before, there really, if you wanted to talk to someone, you know, like in England and you lived in the, in the U.S. or something, you know, it took a really long time to contact them. But now we have things like Facebook and Twitter and, it lets a, and YouTube and it lets us um, become aware of what's going on around the world. And so um, to just be able to access that is something that I think is remarkable and uh, definitely should be used and seeing um, 
seeing like Monica said, the, the riots and stuff, like we have access to see what's going on. Like it's not hidden by media because um, we are the media now. So we get these, uh, we can attain, obtain an objective viewpoint of everything uh, if we look for everything and try to find an awareness in those videos and in Twitter and Facebook and um, what people are saying. Do you think you see anything problematic with, I mean, speaking to the idea that we were able to see things, events unfold as they happen, we don't have any news that rolls in, everything's 24-hour news cycle, everything's immediately updated on New York Times, uh, does that, there's a certain level of sensationalism then because people then will see something on Twitter or on Facebook or in the news and like just recently uh, Libya were looking at that type of riots or move, movement, revolutionary movement in one perspective and we feel connected to it in a way that we really aren't. People can feel like they relate to it in a way that they don't. And there's a sensationalism that's involved because if you watch clips of that, you're gonna see a clip of something actually happening as opposed to the events unfolding behind it. Whenever we see something that's a revolution in a country on YouTube, it's always violence. It's always sensationalized violence. The clip's maybe two minutes long, maybe a minute, maybe 30 seconds. It's never a rally speech 15 minutes long of revolutionaries discussing their ideas how to better the country. That's never the video you watch because no one's going to watch a 15 minute long YouTube video. So that sensationalism then adds to the idea that we, people halfway across the world have this feeling that they're connected to something that they're not at all and that can be problematic on, in some regards. Does anyone have, want to speak to that? Sort of similar, not quite on the same topic. I mean, I was just thinking about what you're saying about uh, how YouTube is being used as a primary source of information almost in a way with a lot of videos coming out from people on the ground in these various places where interesting things are happening, such as, you know, the revolutions going on and so forth. And <clears throat> one issue I see is that YouTube is, in a way, really open to censorship. Um, as we've seen in a few places, I mean, YouTube as a company can take things down if they want to. And I think it's just kind of... I guess I see a bit of an issue with using social media as a place where we're really getting a lot of our information, considering that we're not really sure how neutral it is yet because it's so new. So That's an excellent point. A lot of times we forget that these channels that we use, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, are all companies that all have vested interests in the continuation of their company. They're not explicitly for the people who are using them. Anyone else have any thoughts on anything? Um, I think it's also interesting to kind of place yourself uh, within um, your community in terms of what you do decide to become aware of. Like you'll hear a lot about certain videos or, um, and you can decide whether or not you wanna like watch that and become aware. So. Um, I guess by having it so easily access, accessible, then um, it's it more, it's like you can't not know about something because you just don't know. It's, it's, it's up to you to take an initiative and, and you decide what you, where you want to be placed in, um, I guess, what you find important to find out about. Or, uh, and it's also interesting, like, what does become popular and why and then to look at comments and the like crazy discussions that result from the videos you know that's a good point I think one thing to think about we were talking about as a tool as a social media as a tool which is a good use of it but also particularly with YouTube I don't think a lot of us spend the majority of our time on YouTube doing social media work that's productive in terms of watching video activism in one region or another, or watching videos that relate to news. I think that probably most of us, and if anyone disagrees, feel free to comment, but I think most students probably use YouTube for recreational purposes, for entertainment, for maybe uh, 
DYI type of education, but not rarely uses it to connect with someone halfway across the world. Anyone have anything else they want to say? No? All right. Well, we're going to end. We have coffee and cookies over on the side. Uh, you can do that. And thanks so much for coming. <laughs>